Now, in Congress and in the corporate media, there is not a whole lot of talk about perhaps the most important domestic issue that we face, and that is the grotesque level of wealth and income inequality. Now, Congress may not talk about it, media may not talk about it, we will talk about it. It is not acceptable to me, nor the American people, that today we have three people owning more wealth than the bottom half of American society. It is not acceptable that the top 1% now owns more wealth than the bottom 92%. It is not acceptable that at a time when millions of people in Vermont, California, and all over this country are working two, three jobs to keep their heads above water, that 49% of all new income goes to the top 1%. It is not acceptable that CEOs of major corporations now make 300 times what their workers make. It is not acceptable that half of our people are living paycheck to paycheck. And that's the reality in America. We're going to talk about it, but more importantly, we're going to do something about it. It is not acceptable that in this great country, wealthiest country in the history of the world, we have the highest rate of childhood poverty of almost any major country on earth. And I get sick and tired of hearing politicians tell us how much they love America, but apparently they do not love the children. If you love America, you will love our children and treat them with the respect and dignity that they deserve. Now, when we talk about what goes on in our economy, what we have seen in the last 30, 40 years is a massive transfer of wealth from the middle class and working class of this country to the top 1%. Over the last 30 years, the top 1%, listen to this, top 1% have seen a $21 trillion increase in their wealth. Bottom 50% have seen a $900 billion decline in their wealth. So whether the 1% likes it or not, we are going to create an economy where there is a fair distribution of wealth and income. We're going to create an economy where all of our people, our children, our elderly, our veterans, the working families of this country, enjoy a decent standard of living. Bernie's right. Income and wealth inequality is one of the major issues facing our country. We have grotesque levels of income and wealth inequality in this country. Over the past four decades, the middle and working class of this country have seen a significant portion of their wealth get transferred to the people in this country that don't need it, and the wealthiest people in this country. And it isn't right. I mean, we reportedly have millions upon millions of people living in poverty in our country. And on top of that, so many people are struggling to get by. Did you know that according to a poll, only 39% of Americans say that they would be able to cover an unexpected $1,000 bill with funds from their savings. 
And yet our solution to this is to continue to give huge tax breaks to the rich and just hope the money trickles on down to everybody else. But why is this happening? Why do we have such gross levels of income and wealth inequality in this country? Well, it's because of money in politics. The wealthy are buying elections and our politicians, and it's turning out terribly for the American people. Did you know that if the minimum wage had kept up with the increase in American productivity, that the minimum wage would reportedly be much, much higher than it is today? But instead of sharing the new wealth with the people who helped them obtain said new wealth, as aforementioned, the wealthy are hoarding all of the new wealth for themselves. Now, I'm not trying to demonize all wealthy people. There are undoubtedly wealthy people who are good and want to see us be a moral and just society. But at the end of the day, we do have a corrupt finance system where wealthy people are able to buy elections. And unfortunately, they do. A lot. And as a result, we have gross levels of income and wealth inequality in this country. And so many people are really struggling to make ends meet. This is not okay. And this must change.